this is Kay Gray. Today we're going to talk about aggression in our culture and how that's related to free will and the fact that there really is no free will. You run like a girl. Stop crying. Cut it out. Are you crazy? Don't be such a baby. Stop being stupid. Aggressive phrases like this are commonplace in our culture, whether it's on the playground or at work or even in our homes with our families. And I'd like to figure out exactly why this is and how to fix it. What is it that makes kids so angry? We have this assumption that children are just mean to each other, but that can't be how we evolved. It's a symptom. It's showing us that there's something wrong about what we're doing. Can you sit at a desk without moving for seven hours every day? being taught new things that you don't actually have an emotional connection to? I know that I can't. I've worked in schools for many years and camps and I've seen firsthand how children treat each other and how adults treat children. Kids are a lens for us to see exactly how we treat each other because they just amplify exactly how we model things for them. The very first day I worked at an aftercare at my daughter's elementary school, I saw a fifth grade boy take the ball away from a kindergartner and kick it clear across the yard. When I tried to tell other teachers about how unfair and terrible this seemed, they um, were quick to judge me for judging them. They told me that I haven't been here very long and that I, they have a wonderful culture and, they're, they're, and that there is absolutely no bullying in the school. I came to learn four years later that there was plenty of bullying in the school and it was um, ignored. That's pretty much the case that uh, I've seen in every school that I've ever been to. It's, it was the experience of my daughter and my own experience growing up. School in the United States is a breeding ground for hatred. Making kids sit at desks all day is a poisonous environment for anybody to learn and grow. But more than that, the teachers are filled with an angst because they don't get paid very well and because the curriculum itself makes absolutely no sense based on the science that we know about how our brains work and how we learn and how we uh, learn to have compassion for each other. In my experience, the schools in the United States are specifically built to funnel people either into office buildings or into prisons and that is really the only two directions that it can go. We need to keep children with their parents. It's how we're built to be. We are not meant to send away children to be raised by other people all day every day. They are meant to be with us. They have to see how we live, how we work, and they have to help us do the things that we do every day, whether it's cooking or cleaning or building things or growing things, we are meant to be doing those things together. When we don't work towards a common goal, all that we can come up with is competition. And that's what we see in kids. They compete with each other all the time. Who can be the meanest? Children have to see adults cooperating and collaborating together and then collaborate on their own projects as well as helping adults. If we want to save humanity, we have to take children out of the schools and put them back in with the families that grew them. I'm personally very grateful for this time where everybody is forced to do homeschooling because finally they are faced with the fact that they brought people into this world. You bring people into this world, you're responsible for them, not a school system. Perhaps if you knew how much work it is to raise a child up to the age of 25, which is when they're actually done growing, then maybe you would have had a, a second thought about having those kids. The idea of free will comes from an illusion that our mind creates for us so that we have the sense of control. But the truth is that we don't actually have any kind of free will. Everybody does the best that they can with the tools that they have. Your brain is constantly making trillions of calculations in order to make a decision. Parts of our brains are built to also trick us into thinking that we have some kind of control over the decisions that we're making, but research shows us that that's not actually the case. There have been studies where we watched um, neurons firing, and we found that neurons can fire seconds before we are consciously aware of a choice that's been made. When we judge other people, it's because we don't understand that we ourselves are the product of our programming. 
if you have an easier time at life than other people do, it's your job to step back and to find some compassion for the people that struggle, not to judge them. When I took a psychology class and I announced very clearly into the room that I don't believe in free will, everybody had something to say about how they're certain that they made a choice. For example, someone said, tonight I choose to study my homework rather than not studying. And so I said to them, did you really choose it? Do you know how to study? Do you know how to make note cards? And do you know how to manage your time? Do you know how to read? Do you have enough food to eat? Are you reeling from a PTSD episode over a rape or an abuse that happened in your life? Did you have the opportunity to go to school in the first place? Did you have auditory processing issues and you didn't hear that there was homework tonight? Not to mention having the dopamine that motivates you to be able to stick to a task. All of those things contribute to you being able to choose to do homework tonight. I'm not saying that having a difficult time should excuse you from ever trying, but even these words that I'm saying right now will influence whether you try or not. We're constantly in a weather pattern of inputs and signals, both from outside ourselves and inside ourselves, and we really cannot help the decisions that we make. Are we just a giant program constantly acting upon zeros and ones? I think we are. And if there is an ounce of free will, it is so minuscule as to not even be relevant. So the next time you look at someone and you say, gosh, that person is lazy, or why can't they do things the way that I do things? See if you can find some compassion and remember that they are trying. They're doing the best that they can. Are you addicted to Facebook or other social media that actually doesn't make you feel good at all? Do you hate the fact that you're addicted to it, but you still go out and judge drug addicts. Look at yourself first. You're addicted to something that makes you sick. The most controversial example is serial killers. They are doing the best that they can with the tools that they have. If they had better tools, they wouldn't do what they would be doing. Is there a Nazi in every one of us? You're damn right there is. With the right circumstances, any of us would have done the same thing that they did. We can rehabilitate almost anyone. I really believe that, but they need the correct tools. There are those that may not be capable of being rehabilitated. President Trump is one of those people. I thought that this pandemic would wake something up inside of him, but that is a person who was too far gone, too much of a criminal to be able to pull back from the edge. I don't have any answers for what to do with people like that, but I do believe that there aren't that many of them. I think that most people do have some light inside of them and that we can reach it. But we have to start with love and compassion. Our prison system only makes the trauma that the prisoners experience worse. They grew up in trauma. That's why they ended up there in the first place. People act out when they're hurting and afraid and they don't have the necessary tools to process their pain. And so it turns into anger. It's a very animal response. In order to save people from going from school straight into the prison system, we have to change how things are functioning. First of all, people need to be trusted. We have this no trust system all the way from grade school where you are constantly punished for doing things your way. But we have to give people the benefit of the doubt that they know what they're doing with their time. True rehabilitation starts with giving people the services that they've been missing their whole life. Meditation, healing, time, medication, the food, the clothing, and most of all the love that they've been missing their whole life. When someone tells you that they can't do something, believe them the first time. We have to start with trusting people about being honest about their condition. Once you breed that trust, then you can have a working harmonious relationship. Without that trust, you're just riding on fear all the time and it looks like anger on the outside. When you see someone struggling, Ask them if they want your help, and then ask them again, and maybe a third time. And then be honest about your own limitations and what you can do and can't do for them. But at the very least, offer them that compassion, that humanity. We are all under the spell of a colonized capitalist society, and we all need help. Compassion is going to go much further than hate.
But most of all, you have to find compassion for yourself. All those words, all those angry, ugly words, they've stuck with you all of these years. Stupid, lazy, why can't you be like your brother? All of that echoes in your ears. And because I know that what I say affects you and changes your ability to do things, this is your permission to love yourself unconditionally. You have done enough. You do enough today, you did enough yesterday, and you will do enough tomorrow. Give yourself permission to go slowly, go easily, to rest, and to stop if you need to stop. If you find yourself on the verge of tears, let those tears flow. That is your actual pain being processed by your body. Afterwards, it won't hurt so much. We hear the words don't cry so often in our culture that it is just assumed that it's something to be embarrassed about. But it is literally a tool that we have in order to process our pain before it becomes violence. If you don't process it, you will hurt someone, starting with yourself. I hope these videos have been helpful to you. I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. And if you want, share it with your friends. I'm trying to build something that's important for me. Most of all these videos are for my daughter so that she has them growing up. When you have ADHD, it's really hard to listen to other people. And though I struggle to get some wisdom into her mind some days, that's why I leave these notes so that when she's ready, she can come back and listen to them. Try and find some love for yourself today and you'll find your heart flowering open for others.